Hi, this is Dr. V. Din, and I'm going to be presenting to you ultrasound guided procedures. We're going to be going over central lines, peripheral lines, thoracentesis, paracentesis, and lumbar puncture. For central lines, you want to choose a linear probe. You want the indicator on the probe towards your left, and you want to choose a vascular application on your machine. Regarding shorter long axis approach, I generally recommend perfecting the short axis approach prior to doing the long axis approach. The short axis approach is much easier for novices to perfect and the benefit is that you can see both the artery and the vein on the same screen. However, the needle is slightly difficult to see because it only shows up as a small point on your ultrasound machine. The long axis approach, you can see the entire needle and you can see exactly what depth the needle is at. However, you, m you have to make sure you're cannulating the vein and not the artery, and that takes some experience. <clears throat> the most common site is internal jugular vein, and we'll show you how to use a short axis approach. The first thing you want to do is you want to center your vessel in the middle of the screen, and you can use either a biopsy guide or M-mode cursor on your ultrasound machine to look at where the center of the screen is. You notice that most transducers have an arrow right in the middle of the transducer that corresponds to that middle of that screen. That's where you want to place your needle. <clears throat> so the first thing you want to do is you want to place your probe and direct it where you want to target that vessel. The next thing you want to do is you want to measure the distance between the transducer and the anterior wall of the vessel. And for this vessel it's about one centimeter distance. After you measure that one centimeter distance, <clears throat> you're going to start inserting your needle tip one centimeter away from your probe and advance until you see tenting of the vessel. And here's a good example of tenting of the vessel. And right after tenting, after you get good tenting of the vessel, you can advance another few millimeters and you should see the tip of the needle inside the internal jugular vein. The next approach is a long axis approach, and for this approach, you turn your probe 90 degrees, and you place the needle directly underneath the probe, and you can visualize the needle as it goes into the target vessel. Here's an example using a long axis approach. Here's the needle, and you can see it puncturing as it goes straight through. This is nice because you can know the exact depth of the needle as it goes through, and you have lower chance of hitting that posterior wall. The other thing you want to do after you get the needle in is you want to place the guide wire. <clears throat> so ultrasound has both 100% sensitivity and 100% specificity in predicting venous placement of central line catheters. So here's an example of a central line, or sorry, a guide wire that is going through the anterior portion of the vessel. You can see it in the lumen of the internal jugular vein. <clears throat> you can also confirm it with short axis approach by following the needle tip and making sure it's going into the vein and not the artery. So here you can see it right here as it goes into the internal jugular vein. Here's an example of a neat way to put in central lines is actually putting the guy wire in in real time using a long axis approach. So ultrasound can provide a false sense of security if you are not following your needle as you're going in. And they found that many patients, usually using a short axis approach, can penetrate the posterior wall. And as you have increased training, you'll decrease the amount of posterior wall penetrations because you're following that needle tip. Also, you have to be aware that if you don't follow the needle tip and you don't know where it's at, you can be going too deep. And there are... Um, actual evidence that the short axis approach can lead to airway loss if you hit the trachea, you can get pneumothorax, you can hit the, uh, the common carotid artery and cause bleeding. So be very careful and really practice following your tip when you're practicing these procedures. <clears throat> so in summary for central lines, make sure the indicator on the probe is towards your left. Um, choose either long or short axis approach. I recommend using the short axis approach first and always make sure to confirm your guide wire prior to dialing your vessel. <clears throat>
For ultrasound guided IVs, um, the technique is exactly the same. However, you're just going to be using uh, peripheral IV catheters and try to use a longer catheter if possible. The shorter catheters sometimes get dislodged and the longer catheters have been shown to, um, to stay much longer, about a day or two longer than these shorter catheters. But the approach is exactly the same. The other procedures we're going to go over are thoracentesis, paracentesis, and lumbar puncture. They're all very similar in terms of their approach, and they're going to be using a static approach as opposed to what we use for central lines and peripheral lines where we use a dynamic approach and follow the needle tip in. Here, we're actually just going to use the ultrasound to mark an X and then place the catheter or needle tip in after we place the X. We don't actually do it in real time. <clears throat> so for thoracentesis, you want to have the patient laying in left lateral D cube, or you can have them sitting up also, depending on how uh, comfortable the patient is. We'll describe both approaches. And you want to lift their arm up right here so that you can open up their rib spaces if, if possible. <clears throat> so you want the indicator on your ultrasound probe pointing up towards the patient's head. And you also want to look at the fusion. Uh, you can rotate it either clockwise or counterclockwise um, to get a transverse view also. So basically what you're looking for is where is my biggest pocket where I can safely enter the needle and make sure you avoid the diaphragm. And this is a good example of a large pleural fusion. Here is some atelectatic lung. Here is a diaphragm. So we're a good five centimeters away from the diaphragm if we entered right here. Okay. And after you identify that large pocket, you can just place a nice X on where you want to go and you can enter your needle and catheter safely in that spot. Make sure the patient hasn't moved from the time you mark the X to the time you place the catheter. You can also have the patient sit in the, on the bed if they are able to. Uh, and this is really nice because then all the fluid goes inferiorly and makes it larger, the, the pleural fusion larger for you um, to, uh, to place the catheter. So you want to place the probe and you want the indicator up towards the patient's head initially, exactly like the left lateral D-cube approach. And you also want to turn 90 degrees, either clockwise or counterclockwise, and find the biggest space possible. And once again, you mark the X prior to uh, placing the needle tip. For paracentesis, you can, very similar approach with thoracentesis, however you're looking for the fluid in the abdomen instead of the lung and that usually the indicator is up towards the patient's head and for here we're placing the probe on the patient's right abdomen you can usually we usually don't put it right in the center because that's where the bladder is so you want it next to the midline and you can also look more laterally sometimes that's where patients have the largest pocket of fluid so basically you're looking for the largest pocket of fluid look on the right side you can also look on the left side and also more laterally on the left side. And once you find a good spot, once again, make sure you turn 90 degrees so you find it both in a transverse view and a, long, and a longitudinal view to, to make sure that it has the biggest pocket of fluid. You can mark an X, and once again, you can place your uh, needle or catheter through that X. And make sure the patient hasn't moved since you made that X. Um, one caveat is for paracentesis is you want to avoid hitting the inferior epigastric artery. And how you can do that is you can get a linear probe and place it right uh, paramedian. Um, and what you're looking for is the, a vessel that, cr that goes along the paramedian side of the abdomen. And here's a drawing from an article where they actually mapped it out for a patient with ascites. And here is an example of the inferior epigastric artery. It's right underneath the rectus muscle here. And normally what I do is I look for the iliac artery first and then just look medially and you'll find the inferior epigastric artery. And here's an example of that. The last procedure is lumbar puncture. And once again, this is a static approach. You're going to have the patient lying like you normally would for a lumbar puncture, usually crouching down on a table. And the first thing you want to do is have the indicator up towards the patient's head, looking for the spinous processes. So here is an example. This is up towards the patient's head, toward the left side of the screen. This is towards the patient's foot. And here you can see a spinous process here, and a spinous process here, 
and right here is the space between the spinous processes. These are inner spinous inner uh, spinous process space, and that's where you want to place your needle. Correct. You also want to look at it in transverse view here. And now we turn 90 degrees, and now you're looking for the spinous process in transverse view, so you can center your 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 probe that way. So after you look for it in the sagittal view, you're going to mark with a marker right in the middle of that probe, horizontal lines, both to the left and to the right. Turn it 90 degrees, mark, hor uh, mark vertical lines up as well as down. Okay, And then what that gives you is basically a crosshair. And this will, will show you where the midline is as well as where the the space between the spinous processes is and you can direct your uh, lumbar puncture needle right there because you know that's where um, the the where it's in between the spinous processes you can mark it on several spots so just in case you miss one you can go to the next spot and so forth and that ends the lecture on ultrasound guided procedures Thank you very much, and hopefully the faculty members can further show you how to do this on your hands-on station.